All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we'll be able to give them the same comfort God has given to us. From 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Today we gather to comfort one another as we remember with much joy the life of Jerry Gaither. Patsy, his wife of 58 years, son Keith and his wife Vicki and their daughter Audrey, son Mark and wife Allison and their children Brown and Ellie. They would want me to express to you their thanks for the love, support, and encouragement that you have given them all through the years, but especially during Jerry's illness and through the last few days. And encouragement, I think, is the key word here because like many of you in this audience, we have been encouraged in some way over the years from this family. Maybe it was a visit, a phone call, maybe a note in the mail or a card, some food delivered or a helping hand, but always an encouraging word. I'm sure you all have examples, maybe two or three examples, that you could share this afternoon. Jerry and Patsy have been part of this church family for 52 years. Yesterday, Patsy and I were discussing about all the talk over the years about it taking a village or a community or a city to raise a family. But she nailed it. It really takes a church to raise a family. During Brentwood Hill's 68 years of history, the church has always wanted to be known as a church that is Christ-centered and a church that is a family. And I think Patsy and Jerry, like many of us that go here, found a family here at Brentwood Hills, the same many of you found a family where you go to church. It was a place where we could lean on each other as we raised our children. Keith was two years old when they came here. Uh-oh, I think I just told you how old Keith is. Um, if you, if you can add and put it together. Keith, you can forgive me for that later. <laughs> Mark, like many of our children, was born after our families came here. I feel confident that uh, it's much the same thing that Paul told a young preacher, Timothy, when he told him that his faith was a faith that he first knew dwelt in his grandmother and then in his mother, and I'm just sure there were a lot of other ladies and men and people in his church community that influenced his faith. The same way that both Keith and Mark have memories of their grandparents, their parents, Sunday school teachers, youth workers, and other people from this church family that impacted their lives and helped them to formulate the faith that they have today. In the same way, Jerry and Patsy have impacted members of this Brentwood Hills family. From the early days, families that lived just a couple of miles from this building here at 5120 Franklin Pike really became the heart and soul of this church. They were neighbors. They were helping each other. They went to church together. And they formed a lasting bond from the love of God. The same love talked about in Lamentations. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. And so I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him. You know, Support and comfort is given through scripture in many ways to how God treats all of us when we are hurting. But you know, God doesn't really want us to face the hurt, but he knows that we will. And when we do, and when there is sorrow, we never need to face it alone. And that's why it's true that we have family and friends like many of you gathered here today. You're like junior high, not the school, but an individual, junior high, who was one of their neighbors who lives close by that all of us here know very dearly. He went and planted a garden for the Gaithers this year. He tilled it, he's watered it, he's cared for it in his own way so that Jerry, Patsy, and their family could enjoy a garden this summer. 
It's all called caring for neighbors. The same way that Seth Carmody and Max James and Jerry used to walk in the neighborhood. Many may have thought that they were walking for exercise, but I'm told that they really were the unofficial neighborhood watch team. They went through that neighborhood looking out for their neighbors and seeing if there's anything they needed to check on. Why would they do that? They did it because they were friends. They were neighbors, but more importantly, they felt like family. So today we gather as a family. We come to comfort a family, but we gather here as a family. Andy Flatt, who lives close by to this family, will be leading our congregational singing, and a little bit later he'll have a solo. Walt Lever, who's the minister here at Brentwood Hills, will go to God in prayer. And Jeffrey Sykes, a member of Jerry and Patsy's family, will share some family memories. And we're going to begin it all with one of Jerry's favorite songs, How Great Thou Art. Let's sing this together. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul. Shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art! Then sings my soul. Thank you so very much that you invite us into your presence and you ask us to call you our Father. And we gather here today to honor, to remember, to thank you for a very special Father. We're thankful for Patsy, who along with Jerry raised two fine sons. And Father, we're thankful for their families. We're thankful for their wives. We're thankful for their children. Because all of it reflects on the father and the mother that they were able to witness throughout their entire lives the example that they set. Examples of unselfishness, service, humility, care and concern, and examples of faith. Faith in you, 
faith in Jesus. Realizing that it's only through that faith that we have hope. But Father, today we have nothing but hope. Hope that is alive. Hope that is powerful. Hope that transcends the grave. And Father, even though we grieve, and grieving is certainly a very important aspect of our lives when we're separated, even if it's for a short time, and this will only be a short time. Even when we're separated for a short time, we grieve, but we don't grieve without hope. Because, Father, we thank you and praise you that Jesus not only lived on this earth to, to live the perfect life, but he died on the cross to pay the sinner's price. And, Father, we're thankful that we are here today to remember a man who is our brother in Christ because he put his trust and his faith in you. And, therefore, we celebrate. Therefore, we realize that that day will come when there will be a grand and glorious reunion. And, Father, until then, we can be inspired by the example that he has set. We've already heard some of the, some of the special memories, and we'll have more to come in, here in the next few minutes. But, Father, through all of this, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Time is filled with swift transition. Not a birth room mood can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging. life on Tuesday. He was the son of Claude E. and, and Lyra Fowler Gaither. He leaves behind his just the wife of 58 plus years, uh, Patsy Tenpenny Gaither, and also his sons Keith and Mark, Keith's wife Vicki, and Mark's wife Allison, grandchildren Audrey and Brown and Ellie, and was preceded in death by a brother, uh, Ronnie. Gaither, and certainly to the family, we extend our, our sympathy, our prayers, and I know they are so grateful for all who have come through this place uh, on this day and for those of you who are here now. If I can, let me talk about myself for a moment. Some of my happiest memories and the happiest times of my life 
have been spent in Cannon County in Woodbury, Tennessee, just, just down the road from Murfreesboro for all of you non-locals. Uh, my grandparents lived there. Uh, my grandfather was a farmer. My grandmother was a teacher. My aunt and uncle and cousins lived uh, just up the road in Reedyville, uh, Tennessee. I've got one of my cousins here and his wife the home of Patsy and uh, Patsy's mother and father, uh, my Uncle Paul and Aunt Rachel. I always looked forward to spending extended time in Woodbury in the summers. It was a great place, just a much slower pace of life. And my impression of Woodbury was absolutely shared by Jerry Gaither. He grew up there. As a matter of fact, he was born at home there in Woodbury. He called that time growing up uh, the best growing up years and country living in a small town. He went to school there. That was a community where my grandmother taught second grade. The house was about a mile from the courthouse square. And he said he could walk to town, walk to school, walk to church. Makes it pretty convenient, doesn't it? Not only that, his grandmother had a grocery store just down the street. It was a community and still somewhat is, where everybody knew each other. Growing up, Jerry worked several odd jobs. Uh, summertime would bring farm work and working with hay. On many Saturdays, he could be found helping to deliver bread for the Sally Ann Bread Company, if anyone remembers that. Uh, once he graduated, he served two years in the Army as a military policeman. He also served uh, for a year in South Korea. Some 58 years ago, he married a Patsy Tenpenny. She had been one of his schoolmates. She happens to be my mother's first cousin. For 30 years, he worked as a systems analyst in data processing for the state of Tennessee. Among other things, he enjoyed hunting and fishing and gardening. And I know how appreciative the family was of what Junior did with that garden this past year. Jerry and Patsy were members of this church right here, Brentwood Hills Church of Christ. And even though we shared a family connection and a connection with Woodbury, it was here at Brentwood Hills that I really got to know Jerry and became really acquainted with, with Jerry and Patsy. And one thing I quickly found out was how wonderful and unpretentious Jerry Gaither was. Uh, my wife Joanne and I were in and out of their homes a, a number of times during our stay here. We got to know their children. Uh, Keith and Mark, you've hardly changed a bit since we were here. Uh, I, I can remember on one occasion, even as a young photographer, uh, having been taking some photography courses, going out and having a family shoot with all the family dressed up in blue Oxford cloth shirts. And uh, that's just one of my Gaither memories. Just this past Sunday, I spoke right here at, at Brentwood Hills after having been away for a while. And since we were going to speak and since we know about Nashville traffic, uh, we came in Saturday and among other reasons for not just to be here, but we wanted to see Jerry and Patsy. Uh, knew he had taken this turn, knew that hospice had been called in and very thankful for that time to be able to see Jerry and speak with him uh, briefly and spend some time with Patsy and the boys. We knew that certainly uh, that was going to be the last time that we saw Jerry in this lifetime. But I am thankful for that memory. And I hope as we leave this place in a few minutes that we will all take our various memories of Jerry Gaither with us. And when I think of Jerry, there are a couple of scriptures that, that come to my mind. One has a particular phrase that jumps out at me. It's from the words of Jesus, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5. And it's the phrase, salt of the earth. That was Jerry. He was just down to earth, uh, imparting a great flavor to those who were around him, whoever he might be associated with. I think of that, and then I think of an incident that's recorded from the life of Jesus in John's gospel in the very first chapter that John writes. Jesus is calling his disciples to follow him. He calls Andrew. Andrew says, hey, I've got a brother. I want you. Brother, you've got to meet this fellow. And he introduces him to Jesus. And let me pick up. With that story, verse 43 of John 1. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, 
We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. My wife Joanne and I were privileged to be in Nazareth uh, this past March, along with several folks from Brentwood Hills. We were there in the late afternoon just as the sun was setting over that city. I noticed it's grown up a bit since the first century, but it was a great experience being in that town we just read about, that town where Jesus spent most of his life here on this earth. And at the time that he was there, there was really nothing great about Nazareth at all. Anything come out of that small town, but we know what did, who did come out of that small town and how that man ended up changing the world. As a matter of fact, people might have wondered many years ago, some might wonder it today, can anything good come out of Woodbury? What could come out of a small town like that? Well, I know the answer to that question. There are multiple answers, but this afternoon we remember one in particular, a good man came out of Woodbury. His name was Jerry Gaither. I'm thankful that our paths crossed. I know you're all glad that your paths crossed too. Jerry suffered quite a bit in these recent months, but I'm thankful for the wonderful promises of God from his word of a place beyond this world Listen to these words from the end of the Bible, the 21st chapter of Revelation. John writes, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. And Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And then this, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. May the sorrow of loss that we're feeling on this day be overshadowed by the wonderful promises of this world to come, of a world with no more sickness and no more dying, of a world where all will be made new. May we take those wonderful promises with us from this place May we live our lives in such a way that one day we will be together with Jerry again. And may we be thankful that we were able to cross paths with small town Woodbury's own salt of the earth, Jerry Gaither. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sins And won the victory Oh, victory! my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about about the streets of gold be 
beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior victory in Jesus comes by the way of the cross. However, it was an empty tomb that allows us to worship our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus paid it all, paid it in full. But the reason was because God has given us a gift through his grace, his amazing grace. I want you to listen now as Andy Flatt shares with us this wonderful message as he sings Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fear. minutes when we leave uh, the family will be in the foyer to visit with any of you that they might have missed when you first came in for this time of of reflection and having memories and thinking about the life of Jerry Gaither and then tomorrow there'll be a graveside service held at the Riverside Cemetery there in Woodbury in closing Paul wrote to the Romans our overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us, and I'm convinced that nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. I'd like to read the words of a song called Hymn of Heaven, Paul Wickham, 
Many of you may have heard on the radio, and we sing it also in many of our worship services. How I long to breathe the air of heaven, where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets. To look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. In every prayer we prayed in desperation, the songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear, in the end we'll see that it is worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears. And on that day, we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of faith with one voice, a thousand generations will sing, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Forever he shall reign. So let it be today that we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints. We raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God who gave us life beyond the grave. Holy, holy is the Lord. Jerry Gaither's pain is gone. He's a step closer, and we're a step closer. And we can all move closer to a day when death will be no more. We know this because of God's promises. Promises that we've been standing on all of our life. And promises that we will continue to stand on until our life is over. And then at that day, we will stand beside the heroes of faith, and with one voice, a thousand generations will sing, Worthy is the Lamb. Holy, holy is the Lord. Let's be standing. And let's stand on the promises. Standing on the promises of Christ by He.
to give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Be sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held Till it was accomplished, his dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in it. His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know. I know with all my heart, his wounds have